The Celtic Tiger was a period of time in Ireland between the mid 90s to late 2000s, where due to a bunch of foreign direct investment, whatever that means, the economy boomed and we all got filthy fucking rich. And so, when I was about nine, my parents used them tiger bucks to buy a house in the west of France. And while we've since had to sell that house on account of the economy taking a dump and everyone going right back to being dirt fucking poor, it did mean that between 2004 and around 2013, me, my mom, dad, and two brothers used to spend our summers in Le Bijonnier. And I hated it. I know how much of a brat that makes me sound like, and I hate talking about it, but look, the ages between, like, 11 and 18 are pretty formative, and while all my friends were off kissing girls and finding dead bodies and having all kinds of coming-of-age adventures, there I was, stuck in the middle of nowhere, with no internet, for three months at a time, in a country that spoke in ruins. Looking back, I do get kind of nostalgic, remembering all the good times I had with my family, and there were plenty of good times, but I was far too busy being an angsty teenage dirtbag baby to appreciate it at the time. Anyways, what does this have to do with Professor Latham? Well, to get from the house in Ireland to the house in France, we had to get an overnight boat from here to here, and then drive about six hours to here, so to hold us over on the trip, my parents used to get me and my brothers one thing each to pass the time. Books? Nah. Movies? Not a hope. If I can't eat it, fuck it, or play Halo on it, then I ain't fucking interested. I'm talking video games. Assassin's Creed, Call of Duty, Mario 64. Well, no, they, they all have to be portable since we were in a car, so. Assassin's Creed, Call of Duty, Mario 64. And one faithful year, Professor Layton and the Curious Village. I picked it up pretty much at random, thinking, right, 100 and whatever puzzles, looks kinda like brain training, that'll surely keep me occupied for a while, but holy shit. An actual human girl let me touch her boob that summer, on purpose, and this game was still the best thing to happen to me over the holidays. They could have very easily just slapped a bunch of riddles in a DS cartridge, put a terrifying low poly model of a Japanese man's floating head on the box and called it a day. But no, Professor Layton went above and beyond in every conceivable fashion. It's got a quirky storyline, charming characters, amazing soundtrack, and film quality animation by PA Works, who've apparently done a bunch of weep shit I've never heard of, but this time they were working in a much more traditional European art style, kind of like the Tintin comics from the 1930s, and that is my jam. Unlike the one more level feeling you get with most games, Professor Layton felt more like curling up with a book. It was just impossible to put down. And apparently, I'm not the only one who felt that way. Turns out the Curious Village had sold over 700,000 units in its first year alone, and by the time I discovered it, there were already two sequels out in Japan with talks of an entire prequel trilogy in the works. For the love of God, put my boy in Smash! As soon as we got home from France, I started lending the game to all my friends, and by the time Pandora's Box came out in Europe, we had a bona fide posse of Professor Layton nerds all rushing to GameStop after school. Pandora's box, or the Diabolical box if you're a fucking heretic, was a generally bigger, better, boxier experience. New puzzles, bigger budget, a fucking train, all without losing an ounce of its signature charm. It even came with a little train ticket that you had to bust out to solve one of the puzzles. And while I definitely had a better experience playing this one with all my friends, I still personally considered Curious Village to be the better of the two, and was unconvinced the third installment would be able to top it. He said, sloppily setting himself up for the next segment of the video. Professor Layton and the Lost Future is unironically one of the greatest games ever made and I am 100% prepared to die on this hill. The prettiest pictures, the puzzliest puzzles, and the soundtrack. Oh my god. Get the fuck out of here, Ryan Gosling! Professor Layton saved jazz! I'm having a hard time remembering any franchise, film, book, video game, or otherwise, that's ended on such a high note. It took all the magic from the previous titles and distilled it down to its purest, perfect form. The series is almost worth playing just to experience this one. Don't get me wrong, the first two are amazing in their own right, and the prequels are there. But Professor Layton and the Lost Future, what the helling fuck? The only thing I can compare it to is... God damn it, Metal Gear Solid 3. It's fun and stupid and weird and sad, but it never cracks a smile the whole time and just plays it straight. There's no way you're not going to love something that's making you laugh and cry at the same time. All this, by the way, from a puzzle game on the Nintendo DS. 
I fucked off to London a few months ago, because apparently that's just kind of something I do from time to time, and anyone who's been on the job hunt in a new city can tell you how depressing that is. It got me thinking a lot about the time I spent in France, in that, much like back then, I can't seem to shake the feeling that I'm in the wrong place or I'm missing out on something. But in the midst of all my melodramatic Dawson's Creek bullshittery, one thing held true. Professor Layton, and the mobile app store of all things. I'm sorry I ever doubted you as a viable platform mobile phones, I thought you were just another way for girls to not talk to me. Turns out they've remastered the first two games on iOS- Can you- can you stop doing crimes for like five minutes, please? God damn it. <laughs> they've remastered the first two on iOS and Android, with quality of life updates and a few extra animated cutscenes, and I've just been playing the shit out of them. I've never been able to muster the courage to bring out a handheld in public, so it's been really nice to play these games on the underground or in the park. Apparently there's an entire game about Layton's daughter on here too that I'd never even heard of, and I haven't tried that yet, but I'm really excited to go with a gift. <laughs> go with a gift. <laughs> oh, I've been drinking. <coughs> Fuck! Oh my... Oh god, that was the ash can! Recently, a few of you guys have been asking if I have a Patreon or something, and I don't. Maybe I'll do something like that down the line, I don't know. But for now, if you like my videos, and you've got some money burning a hole in your pocket, please, buy yourself a copy of The Curious Village on your phone. It's like 10 squids and I promise you won't regret it. This series means a lot to me, and I'd love for it to mean a lot to you too. Also, I wanted to do well so they released the third one on mobile. I know this video has been much different from my usual stuff, but I guess I'm just like a roguish loose cannon who plays by his own rules, so... <laughs> Thank you so much for watching my video to the very end. If you liked it, then slam your gun and badge down on that like button and maybe hit subscribe as you get the fuck out of my office. I'd love to know which game series means a lot to you and why, so please leave me a comment or get at your girl directly on twitter.gov. I'll see you guys next time. Mwah.